Hi, my dog lovers. Hi. I am here today because um, I have a big task. For the longest time, uh, we've been trying to record a video on wound healing. And because YouTube and Facebook and all the other social media sites do not allow us to use wounds or show wounds and uh, abrasions and incisions, we've been kind of thinking about what to do. And uh, just about two weeks ago, I had an idea. We can use fruit to show you how to heal wounds. So I prepared. Last night I prepared and I made an orange with a little scab on it from chocolate. And I made also orange with all sorts of different wounds from surgical incision. And then I have a banana here that we are going to heal as well. And an apple. And I promise that you can heal more than your banana. You can heal all sorts of different things. You can heal your abrasion skin and wounds insect bites, um, everything that needs to heal on skin. Skin spray has a long history. When I was a kid, I used to spend my summer holidays with my grandfather and he was a herbalist. In fact, he was an accountant until, until he retired and then he became a herbalist and he collected herbs uh, in his uh, town and then he dried them and he taught us a lot about them. I was really inspired because he taught me that the original drugs were actually made of herbs as opposed to chemicals. So when it came to wound healing and when I uh, became a veterinarian, I started to learn that you know most of the chemicals um, and antibiotics and ointments and creams are actually toxic to skin and to the body. And I didn't like it. Uh, when it comes to Hydrogen peroxide burns the margins of the of the wound and it actually prevents it from healing, believe it or not. Chlorhexidine is also toxic to the skin and to the cells. And I had a very interesting experience many years back where a client mistakenly used chlorhexidine in a wound that was undiluted. And within 10 days, we removed the stitches and the wound completely opened and fell apart. And that made me really realize that uh, chlorhexidine is actually not good for the body because if it, if it was good for healing, if it was good for, for the skin, the wound would heal anyway. But because it kills bacteria, it also kills skin cells and often we don't think about it that way. Now when it comes to iodine, we know that it's a chemical that is really not good to uh, be poured on wounds. And uh, when it comes to antibiotics, we have serious issues with bacterial resistance and superbugs are rampant. Uh, they're actually threatening many people's lives and many animals' lives. So there are many reasons why we should not be using chemicals or antibiotics and antibiotic creams and why I thought for a very long time of a healing solution herbal formula that would work. I remember from my childhood that my grandfather taught me of the different properties of herbs and what they're used for. So I went back to the books that I had from him and started putting together formulas and used them in hospital. And one of them won, one of them speed up the rate of recovery of wounds and healing. I started using it in the practice and then I used it in my family because we often test on humans. <laughs> and so that, that was logical. And uh, then I decided, well, you know, it makes so much difference. Why don't I just share it with, uh, with our community and with dog lovers around the world? And that's how Skin Spray Aka Healing Solution was born. The difference between the conventional methods and uh, Skin Spray is that you would probably never drink chlorhexidine soap, but you can easily <laughs> spray healing solution or skin spray in your mouth and it will not cause any problems. It is made of herbs and there is a little bit of alcohol that has been evaporated predominantly so it doesn't burn. But skin spray is made of herbs and uh, I would like to show you how to use it and how to treat wounds in general. So dogs get hurt and uh, you should have a few different uh, first aids in your bag if you're going or your backpack if you're going for hikes and walks. So ideally you should have a uh, simple gauze. It doesn't need to be non-stick, gauze is fine. And then I really love Vetra, which is a 3M product. It comes in two different widths. And uh, then band-aids, believe it or not, because band-aids can be used in dogs and also for humans. Now, I wanna 
emphasize that this wound healing technique can be used not only for dogs, but also for humans. Now, if you have a clean incision, it is very easy because you can just um, take skin spray and apply it on the orange or your dog's wound or your own wound. Now, we've had some mothers using this skin spray postpartum for healing and they have um, been very happy with the results. Um, one of our team members actually started this trend. You know, if the wound is nice and clean or the incision, surgical incision post-surgery is clean, you can just spray, skin spray on and repeat it maybe two or three times a day. So that's very easy. Now, there is a common misperception that scabs actually aid healing. Now, the problem is that the scab actually prevents the margins of the wound from closing. So when you have a scab that kind of sits there for a week or 10 days, then, and you've probably seen it, it actually creates pretty rough scarring and margin of the wound is red and sometimes it takes longer to heal. So there is one thing that you want to do with any scabs, and this is something that you will not read in conventional books. You want to wash them off. You want to soak them off and wash them off. This is chocolate. Um, I worked on it last night. I ate some as well. And uh, obviously chocolate does get uh, washed off by warm water. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I would do with the scab. And actually it's kind of funny because it's a very similar texture or hardness. So I'm just going to get some warm water. And the water should be, it should not be too warm because you don't want to burn the skin cells that are around the wound. I usually recommend putting gloves on. They don't need to be surgical gloves or star gloves, but you just basically put them on, make sure that uh, you can pretend you're a surgeon. And basically what you do, if you have a fresh wound, um, you actually just rinse it with, uh, with water. So if you have a dog, you can even take, um, take a shower head or you can, you, know, you can bring your dog to bath up and, and rinse the wound. If you're somewhere outside and there's a tap with water, you can do the same. Uh, just make sure that you use stream of water. So after you rinse the wound and it's nice and clean and there are no, there are no impurities, you just basically dry it with a piece of gauze. And then you apply skin spray. What I like to do if, it's, uh, if the wound is kind of large and uh, it's not just a simple neuter incision or something like that, I like to actually put a piece of gauze on the wound, saturate the gauze with skin spray so it's nice and wet. And then I like to put a bandage on. When you put the bandage on the orange or your dog's foot or your hand, you can just uh, apply the trap and leave it on for 24 hours. Now after 24 hours, you can take it off and repeat the whole procedure. Now, during the day, before changing the bandage, you can actually saturate it with skin spray again. So it, it actually has a, has a prolonged effect. Skin spray will have a tendency to dry off. So this is, this is one way to kind of keep the wound nice and saturated with the healing herbs and uh, to make sure that it heals nicely. Now, if you have any scabs on the wound, let's say the next day, you will take the bandage off and there's a scab. What do you do? You try to soak the scab off. So you can, you can, you can put it under a shower hose or a stream of water and just gently, I'm not going to put a shower here because that would be difficult to film, and gently start rubbing or working the scab away. Now it's gonna take some time until there is nothing else than the skin and the wound or the incision. You will see that the margins of the wound will actually reveal. By removing the scab, you will actually allow the margins of the wound get closer gradually. If the scab is there, actually the, the scab occludes or prevents it from, from happening. I imagine that the skin cells have hands and they can kind of pull together and pull together. Especially when you have a big wound, it actually can close really fast. So again, I'm just kind of getting rid of all the scabbing here. And this is a very 
unusual advice, but it works beautifully. And when you do it and when you try it over and over, you'll see that it works much better than letting the scab form. So now you can see that I have just the abrasion. I have an incision here. So once again, I'm going to try to work away. This uh, incision is a little older, as you can see. I poured the chocolate on this incision yesterday. So I, I like to kind of work everything away, like as much as I can, and then use, again, a shower hose or stream of water to really rinse off all the bacteria and everything that uh, should not be in the wound. Now, a stream of water or bacteria, like tepid, lukewarm body temperature water is actually much better than any chemicals that can, you can pour on your wounds and it'll flush the bacteria. And once you apply skin spray on it, it'll heal beautifully. What I'll do now, I'm going to spray, skin spray liberally, then I put a gauze pad on it. Again, I spray skin spray liberally, so it's nicely saturated here. Now, some incisions don't need to be bandaged, usually abdominal incisions, post-surgery, if your dog got spayed or neutered or had another surgery or even orthopedic surgery. So you can just, uh, you can just uh, use um, spray without anything, without any bandage. But the benefit of using a bandage is that the skin spray actually will stay in contact with the wound continuously. So, you know, this is not a perfect bandage, but you kind of get the idea. And again, I spray skin spray on it one more time. After 24 hours, you remove the bandage and you go through the same thing over again, at least for three to five days. And then after five days, maybe a very thin scab will form and you can let it form and you can still continue using skin spray after that until it's completely healed. My experience is that skin spray actually doubles the speed of, um, of healing. And you can try it yourself and let us know how you did. Now, I'm just going to give you another example. I'm going to grab a banana. If you have a paw or a foot and there is a wound, I'm just going to create a little wound. You can definitely hear more than a banana with this. But you can also hear a banana. <laughs> okay, so we have a wound again. I'm just going to repeat it with the banana. Um, so rinse with a stream of water, then um, clean with, with a piece of gauze, dry it off, then apply skin spray. Put a gauze on the banana, bandage the banana. <laughs> oh boy, I'm gonna get in trouble about this. Um, and uh, cut the bed trap. And um, again, you can spray and saturate the whole bandage with skin spray. Now, um, the next day, you unwrap it, you clean it again, make sure that the wound is clean, doesn't have any chocolate on it. <laughs> I don't think I can record this. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. I had no idea what I'm getting into here. So, anyway, um, you can also use a simple band-aid. Let's say that you cut yourself cutting tomatoes or pickles in your kitchen. And uh, you don't want to have a bandage on, but you want to use a band-aid. Um, I usually like using the cloth band-aids because they actually allow the skin spray or healing solution through. So I'm just going to apply the band-aid here. And when you apply the Band-Aid, obviously after you clean your wound and rinse it under, under, under a stream of water, you apply skin spray on the Band-Aid and um, saturate it several times a day and keep it kind of moist. And I usually do that for several days. After 24 hours, you remove it, you rinse it, you clean it, apply another Band-Aid. You can obviously change the Band-Aids more often. 
um, and then apply the band-aid back on, skin spray and so on. There is another way of uh, applying skin spray and that is uh, for bee stings or insect bites. Now, I've seen that work really well. If I get stung by a bee or wasp, um, I would put a bandage on or even a sock and try to make sure that I actually saturate the sock or the bandage bandage with, uh, with skin spray and do that again on an ongoing basis. I had a one-time experience where I did that for 24 hours and after 24 hours I decided to stop and the, the foot, my foot started swelling up and I applied the bandage again, used skin spray and the swelling went down. The other benefit of skin spray is that it will reduce swelling, it will speed up healing and it will also reduce the pain and that's really important in wounds especially with animals and children. We adults, we can be hardy, but our little ones uh, can be. Um, I, it's quite significant. It's almost immediate. Within a few minutes, you will see that the, the discomfort actually will be diminished. So I hope that you liked my little fruit demo and that you will ask questions uh, below. And if you have um, any questions that are more complicated, you can also email us from our website at peterdubais.com. And for more videos and demonstrations, please visit us at peterdubias.com and register for our updates and emails. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.